True horse horsemanship. Today primarily what I'm going to be doing is talking about a training bridle I came up with. It's a combination, you go bitless with it, without it, with just a couple of adjustments. Uh, right now to get this filly used to it, i got an O-ring snaffle in it. And ideally, for an average homeowner, I'd put the clip on the top ring where I got it clipped onto the bridle. So I'm going to be going in different uses with it. Um, it's going to really come in handy down the road with the, her because a really serious thing about showing her. I'll be able to double rein her. Some plate people, depends on part of the country you're at, they call it double bridle. But instead of running her with a bozzel and a shank bit, I can just hook my shank bit to this and double rein her. And I'm going to do that today. You know, it's about prep work. Always about prep work. You know, I see so many people, they buy something like this and they just throw on the horse and go on a trail ride. Well, you know, your pressure point is going to be different. This versus a bit. And me, you know, everybody knows I'm not that big of a fan on bitless bridles, I'll admit. So I had to come, I came up with something, hopefully, if somebody really wants to go bitless, they can and try to keep them safe. You know, people often, you know, I get on my bandwagon. You know, there's a reason I get on my bandwagon. Like today, about 25 years ago, I about got killed by kicked in the head. It was from not really, and it's my fault, even though a car spooked the horse while I was leading it, if I took time and really had that mare halter broke, it would have never happened. Now, same way, one of the reasons, you know, I always ride for the what ifs. The one time I about went off a 60 foot cliff, and if I, I'll be honest with you, if I didn't have a bit in that horse's mouth, I would have went over. So, know your horse, basically, and put the time in it to do it. A lot of times we try to train from the heart, and we all would love to, But it's about keeping a person safe. We're sort of forgetting about that. You know, we're trying to go at the angle, well, poor little horsey, poor little horsey. Well, a horse is a very reactive animal. So if something, you know, you take the most dead broke horse and something spooks it, then you're in trouble. So it's your job as a horse owner have all your bases covered and know how to handle that horse when it comes. So what I'll be doing, I'll be double reining this horse, getting her used to it. And I want to be quite honest with you, uh, she feels that pressure on her nose, she's going to throw her head a little bit because she's not used to it. So that's one of the things I will run into. So first thing I do, you know, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna shorten my rein that's on the nose band area. So in this instance, my direct line on the bit is my backup. Now, if she was farther down the road, and I was sh getting her accustomed to a shank bit, it'd be the other way around. Nope. No, no one. <laughs> Cut. So, you know, I'm just gonna get her on the vertical, let her feel that. Like right there, see, I'm getting resistance because she's not used to it. And y'all have seen this horse back up. She backs up nice. But it's all a different game here. So that's the very first thing I'm going to do is get her back off the nose band. There. 
she gets soft like she did there and then we'll walk her off you know because you gotta think about where that nose bend the way it works it pushes on the nerves that's run through the face so what I'm doing right now I'm just gonna start flexing with both the bit and the ring on the nose band so she gets the idea that way I'm not sitting here fighting with this horse for the first time it's got it on there I can use my snaffle bit to help her and guide her through it now here in a little bit I'm going to drop my bit but I'm going to reposition the nose band when I do that because I won't have that extra additive advantage of having the o-ring on her all right there she, she's backing off that pressure back that's why it says it's important to do your homework when you introduce a new piece of equipment And like I said, I'm bringing my green rain in first, and if she don't respond, then I'll go to my snaffle bit. Like right there, she's fighting that nose pressure. Fighting that nose. And it's good she's doing this because you know y'all get to see what you can run into. And that she's not like I say y'all seen her in other videos with the bit, and she don't mind the bit, but she's not happy with that nose bent. So we're just going to move around a little bit. Now you notice when I start when she starts backing up, I don't bump her forward. I bend her and then I push her forward. Same way if I was working a horse that likes to back up and rear up. I'm not gonna sit here and push them forward. I'll bend them and go. Because they can't go very high when they're bent. Bend them and go. Like right there, so if I pushed her forward, I'd have trouble. So I just bend that nose and get her feet moving. And that's, you know, I hear, well, my horse don't like bit. That's why I went to something, a bitless bridle. Well, this is the case. This horse doesn't like this, the part on his nose. She'd rather have that bit. So at the end of the day, it's your hands. It doesn't have nothing to do with the bit. But at the end of the day, especially in controlled conditions, I should be able to ride a horse in anything or nothing.
So all I'm going to do is, like right now, is teach her I got control of it. Like I said, I'm using my snaffle bit part just for a backup. Same way when I come for a stop, hit the nose band first, and if she doesn't listen to it, then I'd go to my bit. The same way when I start fine tuning her, I'll be doing the same thing. The way I got this made, and you'll see it, because I'm going to take the bit off, and so you'll be able, I'll be able to show it better. to readjust it like this she doesn't like that crap around her nose because at the end of the day them nerves that's running up the front of her face is more sensitive I got it I appreciate it on camera. So, like I said, it just unbuckles and it's done. I'm over with. It's off of it. And, uh, like I said, if you want, you could put the this part on the bit. Now, quite honestly, the only reason I didn't because the way they're made, I don't want the hang you down part up. I like facing down. So, what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to drop it, it down. Because when I'm using it bitless, I want my pressure, I want that nose band, if I take my palm, I put it right here, end of her nose, I want that nose band right there. The reason being, that's where it's going to be most effective. That's where the nerves are. And that softer spot on our face. And also, so I got to make another adjustment underneath. I have it tight. You know, for right now, I would like it a little bit more snug than that, but I gotta put me another hole in it. Oh, here's a quick, a quick tip. Instead of using a whole leather punch, I use a drill. Now I'm going to adjust my cross bands here. And I'll explain why I got them on here. Because right now, for how loose they are, they're ineffective. Of course, when you use this on the same horse, but the only adjustment you got to make is dropping it down if you're riding with a bit. Now I had these cross bands put on here. I wish I just had one more hole. And so, if I pull on this side of the bridle, I'm putting pressure 
on this side of the face also. Just come across and pull on here. If I pull over here, vice versa. I'm pulling on this side, so I got more control of the face. Like I said, I wish it was a tad bit tighter. But it is what it is. So like I said, it's, I'm just introducing this to her. She don't have a clue. So, you know, she's riding real good with the bit. So now we just got to you're used to it. Now, where I snap my reins, I snap it behind this. Not in front. I want it behind. Because if I put it in front, you know, this is sort of getting in my way a little bit. Just like I did when I had her bit it up. I'm gonna grab her face. She comes to my hands. Right now I'm gonna let her go. She comes to my hands, I'm gonna let her go. Just walk her out. You know, especially she's a green horse too. So I'm gonna flex her. Like I said, with that crossover on the back, I'm utilizing, putting pressure on both sides of it to encourage her to bend that head. And there she's trying to straighten that nose out. I'm not going to let her. I don't want her to keep that. When I let go of my rein, I want her to keep that bend. In other words, when you introduce this to a horse, you got to do it just like when you do introduce a bit to, the, to them. Especially when you're riding a, a green horse. Right there, she's. I'm having her there. I had to hold her because I'm picking up her nose. I got all the weight in my hand and I don't want that. There we go. A lot of English riders will say, well, how dare you bend that horse? You know, a horse, if you ever see him scratch or hawk, a horse is quite capable of flexing without hurting him. Because they'll, they got itched back there on the top of their butt. You'll see them reach around there and scratch it with their mouth. So we get caught up in so much BS at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab her face. That's right there, she's trying to pull through my hands. And one thing with a bitless bridle, it's harder for me to hold it. But I'm not gonna come off of her until she gives it to me. Some of y'all say, well, she is giving it to you. I'm feeling resistant. To feel, not only am I feeling resistance through her while she's backing, I'm feeling resistance through her back, right? Right there. I'm feeling resistance through her back, the way she's stepping. And I got my rings in position 
Well, it will help encourage them to bend more than right there on the side of their face. So I'm going to introduce this just like, like I said, I'm going to screw it just like it would when I introduce the bit. Now for show purposes, when I start double raining her with a shank bit, she'll start getting real soft to this. So when I ride her in a short snaffle bit, oh, I'll be able to get super light on it. So there are some advantages. Right there, I just sort of picked up to get out of her way of her shoulder. Or get in the way of her shoulder, I should say. Right there, so I gotta pull a little bit harder than I would. And snap a bit, all I gotta do is barely, I can, she knows that's in her mouth. So if I cue her a stop with my body, she stops. So now I'm going to have to re-school it. That's the whole thing. When you change equipment, especially on a green horse like her, this is the ideal horse to show it on. you got to school them. you got to teach them what, it, what it's about. And uh, this thing is made out of harness leather. She was probably about 20 pounds. It's heavy. But it's good quality work. And uh, I'm pleased the way it come out for later on down the road where I want, like I say, double rain a horse, really finish them off really super soft. It's, I'm going to really like it because then I'll keep the position nose right where it's at. But with a shank bit, it hangs a little different than an O-ring. So I drop it down a little bit or one's not in the way of the other, and I'll get her dancing and everything else with real light touch. So that's all it is today. I'd like to show you something new with this filly, but I guess that'll be next time. So like I said, this thing works pretty good. It's built real sturdy. And um, like I said, where I got the rings is very important. It's lower, you know, I've seen a lot of Bits. The rings are up here, and it's, you got too much of the face. And there is, I tried to position that ring as close to the bit area as I wanted to. And she said, Take this dang thing off me. But, and also, what I did, the warm up was nice. Yeah, you know, I came out here with this, I just clipped onto my side clip there, side O-ring, and I was able to lunge her just with that and work her back and forth and everything else, get her used to it also. So it's got a lot of pluses to it. I'm happy the way it turned out. And she's a small-headed horse. But, uh, so, with that said... So, to, um, if you'd like to order one, you just go to truetohorse.org on the sales page, and they're there. I try to keep the price as reasonable. I got it. I mean, a few people has bought them. They can't understand why they are cheap as they are. But 
we're just out to make a little bit of money and fix it so y'all can afford items and not oversell it. So, as I always say, be true to the horse. They'll be true to you, to my kids, grandkids, special person out there. Watch Day Lake KDA. God bless. Take care.